This is the To Health With That, Naturally Healthy in No Time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor Amy Nuzel, and this is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, we're going to talk about a topic that's been getting a lot of questions lately. That is C677T mutations. So, a lot of research has been done on MTHFR, but we are actually still in the early days. There's a, a, an accumulation of about 3,000 studies out there, um, which sounds like a lot. But, actually, in the grand scheme of research, we're still in the phase where studies often lump all of the mutations together. So, MTHFR polymorphisms as a whole are lumped into one category, and quote-unquote wild-type genes, the research term for normal or not mutated, are lumped into another. Still, we're starting to get a few more specific pieces of information, so let's go over some technical details first. C677 nomenclature can be a little bit confusing like everything else in genetics. 677 is the marker for this particular MTHFR gene. The official genetics labeling of this gene is actually RS1801133. The C and T stand for nucleotide bases that you actually have. C is cytosine and T is thymine. Essentially, C677T reads at location 677, there is typically a cytosine, C, but actually a thiamine, T. The wild type or typical form of this gene is actually C677C. You have two possible copies, one from each parent. Two wild type copies gives you typical genetics and no polymorphism. That's C677C, all around. One wild type and one altered or bad copy gives you heterozygous mutation, C677T. Two altered or bad copies gives you a homozygous mutation. This is sometimes just written as C677T, homozygous, and sometimes as C as 677TT. I occasionally see T677T, but that's a little bit confusing in my mind. I don't like that nomenclature, and it's not often used. So what does that mean? Well, we can sum it up pretty quickly. TT individuals, or homozygous, have about 30% of the expected activity of the enzyme. That means about 60% compromise. CT folks, which are heterozygous, have about 65% of the expected activity of the enzyme, meaning around a 28% compromise. It's really important to notice that both of these groups have some enzyme activity, right? That enzyme is still functioning. It's just functioning at a lower capacity. The, the reason it's functioning at a lower capacity is because, in our magic chair metaphor, the magic chair is lumpy. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about with the magic chair, follow the link in the show notes to see the simplest possible description of what enzymes do. So there's kind of the idea floating out around there that the C677T mutation is really bad, right? Where other mutations might not be so bad. Um, honestly, the biggest difference that we know of between C677T and A1298C mutation is the level of compromise. So because this particular polymorphism is associated with a bigger compromise, more research has been done on C677T issues, and the research does indicate that the mutation has a more serious effect, but none of it has actually separated out that it's because it affects this particular location specifically. More often, it indicates that the effect is directly related to both the degree of the mutation and the folate status of the individual. So what that means is just that it's harder to get competent folate status with a larger degree of mutation, to my mind. Now, this might change, right? But at this time, the degree of compromise in the enzyme activity is the strongest determinant of how much you are affected. And that always, always has to be combined with that person's folate status individually. So people with low folate intake and a higher level of compromise are going to be more affected than people with high folate intake and a higher level of compromise. But Amy, you might be saying right now, that isn't what the internets say. I know, 
I know. I've seen every kind of article claiming that A1298C mutations have more tendency towards neurotransmitter imbalance in, than C677T, and that C677T mutations are more likely to lead to high homocysteine. But as far as I can tell, that started with someone drawing a conclusion, and then the rest of the internet echoing that same conclusion back to them without actually backing any of it up with research. So, as far as the research I've seen, the thing that matters is how compromised your enzyme is in combination with how much folate you're getting. As more research is completed, that idea might be ref refined, revised, or even overturned completely, but for now, that's it. There is no medical reason that I've seen of that suggests that the A1298C mutation or the C677T mutation leads to deficiencies in particular areas of folate use. It just leads to deficiencies if you are not actually balancing your methylation cycle. So just for convenience, I added a table with the levels of compromise of everything compared. Now, it's really interesting. So all of these values are presented in a range, and we'll talk about that in a second here. But with C677T, that's one copy, heterozygous, 51 to 73% compromise. <laughs> that's a pretty big range. C677TT, that's two bad copies, 22 to 32%. And actually, sorry, this is these are percentages of enzyme activity. So you'll notice that one's quite low and a tighter range. Uh, A1298C, that's one bad copy, is 60 to 92% of enzyme activity. And A1298CC, that's two bad copies, 52 to 60% of enzyme activity. So the trend in these um, ranges is that the double mutations have a greater percent of compromise or less enzyme activity than the single mutations, and that the C677T has a little bit higher percent compromise than the A1298C. Also, we have a compound heterozygous, which means one bad copy of C677T and one bad copy of A1298C. And that has between 36 and 60 percent enzyme activity. Now, the range between 36 and 60 is really, really broad. That's a lot of variability. It's kind of fascinating, actually, that we speak with such conviction about things like level of compromise or enzyme activity, when in reality there's very few studies, and those studies don't actually agree with each other. <laughs> so the three that were used for the above ranges, I have links to the complete studies in the show notes, just in case you're curious, but you'll note that the difference between a 36% activity and a 60% activity is almost a factor of two, and yet between those two different studies, the range was that broad. So obviously the research has a long way to go. We really are in the baby steps of this journey. To clarify, there probably are differences between C677T and A1298C. We just don't understand them yet. Because we're in the early phase of research, the bulk of the studies look at wild-type genes versus polymorphisms as a group, and then sometimes pull out smaller data like homozygous versus heterozygous and detail things like that. Once we've built up a more complete body of research, then the smaller questions will start to be explored. I strongly suspect that we'll find differences in the challenges faced by both groups, and I also suspect that they won't be nearly so cut and dry as this group has homocysteine challenges where the other group has a hard time making neurotransmitters. My suspicion is more along the lines of differences in response to therapeutic interventions and treatments. Clinically, the overmethylation versus undermethylation distinction is far more useful than knowing your particular mutation. The basic state differences actually tell us likely responses to supplements, where the particular mutation does no such thing clinically. So it's far more relevant than the particular genetic issue. The one thing that knowing your genetics does tell us is the actual level of compromise, which can be important, but also can usually be extrapolated from your symptoms. Next week, we'll talk about A1298C mutations. Um, the story is largely the same, right? <laughs> I still don't think that it's actually the relevant point, but just, you know, for specifics and for good measure. We'll talk about it from the other side, because some people are more concerned about A1298C than they are about C677. Thanks for listening, and uh, I hope everyone's having a wonderful holiday season this year and staying safe.